Hey everyone, welcome back to Unicorn Dust Designs. If you are new to my channel, hello. My name is Sammy Veltri. I love DIYs, thrift flips, IOD, DIY paint. I love it all and I am so excited to always show you what I have in store. Today we are going to be going through some of my favorite wood DIYs that I have ever done on my channel. Some of this may be new to you. Some of it you may have seen before, but either way, I hope you enjoy. And I wanted to thank June's Journey for sponsoring a portion of today's video. And with that said, let's get right into it. I'm going to start this video off with a porch leaner. Y'all, I still have, I have this in front of my house right now. It is a one by 10 and I did this 52 inches long. I sanded it with 80 grit then 220 and I am staining it with early American on both sides. I end up doing something to the backside during Christmas, but while this is drying in the sun, we're going to hop on, on to the app June's journey. Now June's journey is a hidden object mystery game set in the 1920s. Each scene takes you further through a murdery mystery story. That's that is led by the protagonist, June. And June is trying to find out who murdered her sister. So you are going along trying to find clues to help her out. Now this is an absolutely free app that you can download on iOS, on Android. You can even get this on a desktop through Amazon or Facebook. It has become one of my favorite games. So you guys go download June's Journey located in the description box of this video. You will not be disappointed. I absolutely have been loving playing this game. I play it on mom breaks when I'm feeding Montgomery. I play them when I just need to step away from crafting and clear my head. And I really love the colorful scenes and how the scenes completely change with every step of June's journey. And I love that it has a unique storyline so you're not just finding hidden objects you're really like going through the the storyline with june which i absolutely enjoy so go download it you will not be disappointed link is in the description box let's get back into the video so now that that is completely dry i'm going to take this painter's tape and we are going to put it at an angle and this is all like height and everything of this angle is all going to depend on how um, big you want your text to go up. So you can see I'm like envisioning right here. Okay. I'm like, I know there's going to be cheetah print up top and then our wording is going to go in the, do you see me? I'm like, mm, right here, right there. They, you know, isn't Einstein the one that said that, um, uh, smart people talk to themselves. I don't know. I'm making up stuff at this point. Okay. So now I'm going to measure how far across I have for my text and then how far I can go up. Now keep in mind, it gets smaller as it goes, you know, up into the angle. So you need to keep that in mind while you are making your stencil. Once I make my stencil, I am going to take off our transfer, not our transfer, sorry, our reverse stencil. And I am actually going to paint over this. So anytime that I paint over vinyl, I just use permanent vinyl. You can use stencil vinyl, but I love that permanent vinyl has like a really, really, um, tacky back to it. So it sticks very well to the wood so that you don't get any bleeds under it. Now I am using I want to say this is blush by rust-oleum it is in my amazon store link and my foam roller i'm going to do two coats of this over the vinyl and then i'm going to weed it out and that early american under this pink is so beautiful seriously the color combinations for this porch leaner are absolutely endless so I continue to weed that out. Just make sure that you're cleaning up your little flakes of chalk paint as you go because you do not want them smearing on the rest of your wood. Now I am taking my cheetah stencil that I created on my Cricut and I will leave the original video for this down in the description box because I take you step by step on how to make your own stencil um, on your Cricut Maker. 
So I am just taking one of these stencil brushes from Dollar Tree. They come in a three pack and they are one of my favorites. Um, I like them because you can also cut the bristles like down on them to make it a little bit more blunt on the end and I just go in up and down motions always start off lighter and then you can go heavier because um, you don't want all of that paint going underneath your stencil so slow and steady is going to win the race here just take your time you can also just cut a cheetah print out with your vinyl as well like if you're like i ain't going there with trying to make my own stencil then just cut it on vinyl and you can use that to stencil as well so you can see how beautiful that comes up and you guys you can reuse your stencils over and over again um, i think i have my mylar sheets on the amazon um, in my amazon store um, I did spray this down with clear matte by Rust-Oleum first, just so we don't have any of our chalk paint smearing. And then of course I'm going in with my spar urethane, make sure it's water-based so you do not have your paint yellowing on you. And I am going to give this three coats front and back. And the reason I'm doing three coats is because this will be directly in the sunshine and spar urethane is going to protect it from humidity, from UV rays and any of the other outdoor elements. Y'all, I've had this now for over a year, I believe, and it is at the new house in on the porch right now. And there is no fading or discoloring or warping whatsoever of my wood. So make sure you're using the right products, especially if you're going to be selling um, porch leaners or wood rounds um, so that they last your customers a really long time. Again, spar urethane water-based is what you want for outdoor signs like this. Polyacrylic is used for indoor use. So I did wrap some twine around the top. I just stapled it. And then I tucked in some lamb's ear and got a bow that I made and put a clip on the back of it and just clipped it right on to that twine. Um, for Christmas, I actually did the back of this um, for a Christmas one and it turned out so good. Okay, so the first DIY, look at this weathered scrap piece of wood. I am loving it. So we're gonna take this and then I'm gonna just go in with a, um, a sanding block. This is like the roughest sanding block you can find at Dollar Tree. I'm just cleaning it up. I love all the dirt and the, the gunk on it. So I don't want it to be like fully polished up. I just wanna get the debris off. And then of course our little ladybug, that helps clean up so much. Okay. So after I'm done with that, I just kind of wipe it down, trying to get that excess off because if you don't get that excess off, your vinyl will not stick to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure the top, at least attempt to measure the top. I'm gonna mark off my holes and then I'm gonna get my drill gun and drill that straight through and you'll see why later. Um, I definitely highly recommend investing in a drill gun, y'all. Uh, so after that, we're gonna take our linen white chalk paint by Rust-Oleum and I am gonna give this a light coat. Now I will say I didn't intend for the sign to be this way. I actually wanted to put the vinyl down first and paint over it so you could see the wood, but it is what it is. Now we're taking it, I already put the transfer tape over it, which the Cricut Joy, they have sizes. So it's smart vinyl. And then they also have the same size in their transfer tape as well. So after playing around, I finally got it on. I'm just rubbing that down here. And now taking my chalk paint, Rich Black by Folk Art, and it's, this is actually a chalk paint brush, but I'm using it as a stencil, like to paint the stencil, and it works very well. And y'all, you will never guess how great this turned out. Look at this, and look at this long sign in one swipe. I did not have to slice this image it cut in one, this took me less than 20 minutes to make because I did not have to slice the image. I didn't have to connect different pieces of my vinyl. Oh, and right here, I'm just sanding it down with that same rough sanding block. And then we are going to take some nautical rope after that. I'm using the thinner version from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna tie this in a knot right here. 
and I love the way this turned out and I still cannot believe this took me less than 20 minutes with the Cricut Joy. Like, hello! And look at how gorgeous and distressed this is and y'all, you need to check out the Cricut Joy. I'm not I'm not playing with you, especially if you're someone starting off. It is a great beginner machine. Okay, this next one is 110% inspired by Julie Signs and Designs. Hashtag Avi because I've been binge watching her. Okay, so you guys, this, it, all of this was, well, all of the wood was free, found it on the side of the road from Facebook Marketplace. Spindles I found at the market where my booth is. And you guys, oh, this came out so amazing. So these are, the, the sizes are going to depend on your spindle size. So keep that in mind. I can leave you the measurements, but it's going to depend on whatever spindle you choose to use. So right here, if you see the piece of wood that's closest to you, that's going to be our bottom. And I measured that against the spindle I'm going to be using to determine the size of my spindle box. So me making wood signs, I feel like there was like a way to do this almost like making a sign. But then I ended up going back to how Julie showed how she did it in the video, which was saving the bottom of the box for last. So do you see, I really had to think about that. So I have the sides up and then I'm going to panel these sides because this is like barn wood fencing it was really thin so i had to double it up now you can see i'm using my nail gun i forgot to put wood glue on these so i will do that in the future and y'all if you are afraid of power tools do not be learn how to use them correctly and i promise they will take your projects to the next level i can't say that enough they're worth trying to learn how to use so you can see, I just attached those to the side. It's already coming together. If you guys want a full tutorial on like how I cut this, sized it, please let me know and I can do that because I will definitely be making more of these in the future. And um, I, I love, love, love this. Thank you, Julie, so much for the inspiration. Um, she's just so full of so many ideas. I'll leave her link down in the description box for you guys so you can check out her channel. Okay, so we got the bottom in there and it fits almost perfectly. It's a little wiggly, but that's okay because you can always change out your nails to be longer, which I didn't have to do. So I just nailed those on each side. Now we're going to take our spindle. Now this is where it's like your measurements aren't always right because I measured the bottom based off the spindle, yet the spindle didn't fit in there. So I had to take it to the garage, cut it down just a little bit. Look at how beautiful that spindle is. So your girl, Julie, is cray cray. And she uses like these thin spindles and shoots nails through them. And I was too scared to do that. So I chose the spindle because of its thickness. I thought I would have more of... Um, what was I going to say? What was I going to say? More of a chance of hitting the nail in the spindle if it was thicker. So as you can see, it like went in there exactly where I needed it to. I'm going to take this nail gun. I am so scared right now. Did you see my face? I was like, ah, it didn't go through the wood. Yay. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the opposite side. I'm going to put a few more nails in there just to make sure it's nice and secure. And I, do you see that? I'm like, yay. Okay. So now I'm taking some floral, floral foam by Dollar Tree. I'm not going to hot glue these to the bottom. And I chose to do it that way because whether I choose to keep it or sell it, I wanted people to have the option of taking the foam out if they wanted to put glass jars in there or roll up some, you know, like washcloths or whatever it may be. They would have that option to change it up according to their decor. So I am putting three blocks in here. I'm going to be taking picks from Dollar Tree, which were la from last year. And then these, I think they called them mixed berry like bundles from Walmart. Y'all don't skip out on Walmart for florals because they're very affordable and I think they're great. Meet my ladybug. Uh, you can find her on my Amazon link down in the description box. Her name's Vivian. 
I don't know. I just made that up right now. I think because Everly said her baby doll's new name was Vivian. Okay. Vivian reminds me of Pretty Woman. Okay. Anyways, now we're going to play around with it. This is what's fun about florals is nothing is permanent with floral foam. So you can take it out. You can move it around. I chose to do these, put these picks in here. I actually take off those leaves because they definitely don't go with the greenery. And um, I use, like, like I said, two of the bundles from Walmart and then three of the picks from Dollar Tree. I love these neutrals with the barn wood and y'all check out how this came out. I, I love this. I love the natural wood color. I love that there's a story to it. There's character. I love the neutrals because I mean, you can just take out those picks and change them accordingly. So let me know if you're going to try to make this and love it. All right, you guys, this one looks like a lot of work, but it's not. So I'm taking this footboard, this weathered piece of wood, and we are going to measure this so that it fits inside the two legs of the footboard. So I'm going to measure it, mark it off. I'm going to go ahead and use my saw and we are going to cut that end piece off. Easy busy. And then I just make sure it fits, which it does. Now, actually, I saw this on DIY Beauty on Purpose, my competitor, and um, she just took a spatula, was dipping it in the paint, and then kind of rubbing it on so that it gave it more of like a chipped wood effect. I didn't want this to be all red, so I decided to do it this way, and then I pat it down with a rag. Okay. So now I'm taking Linen White by Rust-Oleum. We are taking this heavy duty uh, chalk paintbrush and I am gonna coat this entire thing. So the front and the back, I do give the front two coats of paint and I only gave the back one coat of paint because to be honest, I was running out of paint. So <laughs> there's that. All right, so now that that's almost dry, you guys, and I say almost dry, I'm getting a baby wipe and I'm distressing where I think it would naturally de-stress. Now, the more pressure you put on, the more paint you're gonna take off. And then um, make sure you're switching out your baby wipes or you're just going to keep smearing the paint over itself, basically. So you wanna make sure that I probably used for this whole thing like five baby wipes. So keep that in mind when you are using the wet distress method here. I love the way that it comes out and I love that you have more control over how you are distressing your piece and how much distressing you're putting on there. So I'm not gonna put you through the torture of watching me do all of that. So I continue to distress the footboard and then we are going to move on to simply putting D hooks on the back of these. I'm just gonna screw it on that side, the opposite side. That's what we're gonna to use to hang. And they hang up to 50 pounds. Look at my Batman and my mom. He's so stinking cute. Okay, so now I'm sorry this angle is horrible, you guys, but I'm taking the Gorilla Glue and I put it on the base of that footboard. Then I put my weathered piece of wood up against it. And now I'm, oh, I did so good though, you guys. I'm using my nail gun and I was eyeballing where I was gonna put this, but it all turned out okay. Only one nail came out the front, so we were good. All right, now taking this, uh, it's kind of like a silk screen um, stencil. I got this from Joanne some time ago and it works incredibly. So I am taking Nantucket Blue, my stencil brush by Dollar Tree, and I am just going to, um, stencil that on <laughs> hashtag duh all right and then after we're done with that while it's still wet i peel it back and you guys that's it that's all there is to it it's done this piece turned out more beautiful than i could have ever imagined i love the simplicity of it i love how you can take one person's trash and make it treasure again and make it something amazing and it's definitely a statement piece and I can't wait to see it in somebody else's home one day. Hello my friends. I am hopping back in. I hope you guys are enjoying these wood projects. I know you guys love wood DIYs and you guys know I do too and I cannot wait to do more now that it is nice outside and we organized our garage. So I hope you guys are ready for new wood DIYs. If you are, comment down below with a happy face because I cannot wait to show you what 
I have been going, what's been going on in my brain for as far as wood goes. So I hope you guys are enjoying it. Make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe if you are digging me and digging the channel and digging the DIYs. All my links are listed down below in the description box. I have my website, unicorndustdesigns.com, where I sell the DIY paints. And I also sell my upcycles as well as thrifted items. And then I also have all my social media accounts down there as well. I do go live on Facebook and YouTube every Thursday night and then Sunday morning if we don't have something planned with the family. So if you are into the lives, then make sure to join us for those. I appreciate you all spending your time with me and watching my content. It means the world to my family and I, and I hope you guys have an amazing weekend. And again, thank you, Jern's Journey, for sponsoring a portion of today's video. All right, you guys, I got this stool for $4. They said all the wood stuff is half off. So actually I got it for $2. It looks like it was handmade by somebody. So I'm taking my orbital sander, 80 grit sandpaper, and we are going to just clean this up, get the grit off, smooth out all of the edges on here. Um, I could not believe I bought, if you guys saw my thrift haul on my shop with Sammy channel, oh my gosh, the stuff that I found at the garage sales this weekend was phenomenal. I'm going to leave the link for that video down below because you guys have to check out what I found. So after I'm done sanding everything, I'm taking Early American by, I think this is Minwax. It could be bare thing. I don't know. But I'm going to stain the front, the back. I'm going to do all of the legs, the side, everything. I love this color. It's very classic color, and I think it works well for so um, many decor pieces. So we're going to finish that up, let it dry. Kansas, it was super hot and sunny, so this seriously dried within like 15 minutes. After that's done drying up, we're gonna take it back inside. I got this decal, I made it for my Cricut, and I'm gonna put that on there, and you guys, this thing is just so, so cute. I love it, and I just felt like, uh, it says pray hardest um, when it's hardest to pray, and I thought, yeah, it looks weird because it's on a stool, like why would you put it on a footstool? But you know, like sometimes we hang our head down in shame or disappointment, or discouragement and then I thought like right when you're looking your head down like maybe just maybe you're gonna see your footstool there and it's just gonna kind of like remind you like you got this you can do this so yeah that was my story behind it so I'm taking my chip brush and the crystal again we are gonna distress this down I'm doing the sides the top I'm only doing one coat of this then I take the excess of the paint that's on the brush and I'm gonna distress the legs Y'all know me, I love wood. So I want to see some of that stain pop through, especially because it'll tie, sorry, that was Tinkerbell, tie in to seeing that wood grain when we weed out all of our letters. So I left this in because I know some of you like seeing it because y'all are weird, just kidding. Okay, so after that's done, I wait for it to dry. We're gonna do two coats of water-based polyacrylic. And I do two because if somebody actually wants to use a as a footstool, I want it to be durable um, for them. So after the two coats, you guys, that's all you have to do. And you've turned this $2 footstool into this beautiful farmhouse decor piece, or actually you can use it. So I love it. I love the saying, look at how you could see that wood grain coming through. And I also love that this was handmade by somebody and I gave it new life and now somebody else can enjoy it. Which is so for this one, we are gonna start off with a six by six piece of wood. Now, pro tip, measure your wood because a six by six actually measures out to be 5.25 by 5.25, sometimes five and a half. And that goes for any size of wood. So when it says like, uh, two by eight, you know, things like that, okay? So we're going to take Ballerina Pink by Waverly and I am going to um, take my stencil brush from Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna give it a messy coat. I'm gonna do the front, the back, and the sides. I am going to do the back of this because it will be a freestanding sign, meaning the person will be able to just stand it up and they don't have to hang it on a wall. Of course, you could put a sawtooth hanger on it, but we're not gonna need that. 
So after we're done with this, I'm going to take my IOD stamps. I get these from Vonda at the painted heirloom.com. This is a part of their um, crackle pack. It comes with four different like crackles in the stamp set. I am using their stone gray ink pad. Look at how cool that looks. We get the crackle without having to use any of the different mediums. And then I'm going to apply just a little piece on the side. Oh, just that added detail is everything. So after we're done with this, I am going to take my um, design that I made and I'm going to take a stencil brush with Elephant Gray by Waverly and I'm going to stencil that on. Now keep in mind, if you are part of my membership group, then you have access already to all of these Mother's Day designs that I did on the Cricut. So I hope you enjoy them. All right, after that, I am gonna do two coats of this color here. Once it dries, I will go ahead and peel back that stencil vinyl. This is Aura Mask 813. And look at, ooh, no bleeds. And then I'm just going to weed out all those nooks and crannies of our letters. Now, you can leave it like this, but you guys know I always got to do just a little something extra. So what I'm going to do is take my IOD molds. I'm going to take my air dry clay. And I'm gonna dust some cornstarch on there first so we don't have it sticking. And once I do that, let's see, let's get that air dry clay out. Um, you can also use hot glue in your molds as well. So that's also an option, but I'm just gonna stick this clay in there and then I'm just going to rub the excess off to the sides. And this mold has these beautiful little birds, which I knew would be great. Then you're just going to get that mold and you are gonna pop those little babies right out. I'm gonna clean up the edges of them. I just wanted them to look a little cleaner. Now, while these are still wet, I paint mine. I don't know if you're supposed to do it or not, but that's how I do. So I am going to paint them with that ballerina pink and then I am going to set them aside, let them dry. Once they dry, I'm going to come in with a gray wax and dust that over my birds. That way, all of the little details, and let me tell you, there are tons of details in these tiny birds. It's insane. So then taking my Starbond glue, I'm going to attach those to the side. I was having such a difficult time holding these. Yeah, that one plopped right down. But look at that little added touch. For me, it is all about details, like just that little extra step can take something from that's so cute to, oh my gosh, that's gorgeous, I need it in my house. So you guys, that is it for this one. It turned out absolutely gorgeous. It is one of my favorites out of this video. That crackle effect is gorgeous, the gray and the pink, the simplicity of it. And I think your mom would definitely get the message with this wood sign. So I hope you enjoyed it. You guys, this scrap wood, look at all this. Like this one even has like tons of nails still stuck on it. I have a bunch of different pieces. So this I think was flooring or molding. I have no idea, but I cut them down to size. Sorry, for like kind of like that filmy uh, look. My phone was dirty from cutting these pieces. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just do all of these in linen white. Uh, I don't cut or paint the middle there, or the base, I should say. So now I'm just taking my wood glue and hot glue, and we're gonna glue our ends on first. And then I do the bottom, you guys. Oh, where is my mind? I literally put that on the bottom of the side. Okay, so I'm gonna put it on the side, there you go, that it's attaching to. Then our front. Now, I should have put wood glue and hot glue on the sides of this piece as well. Don't know what I was thinking, but if you were to like sell these or something, you would need to put um, nails through here just for added security. So just a heads up if that's on your mind. Now we're back. Now you're gonna weed this out just like you would any normal vinyl piece. But the thing is, when you take it off the mat, I'm using the light grip mat, you need to go slow. You don't want to rip those connector pieces on your reusable stencil. So I'm just going really slow. And then look, you guys, whoop, whoop, 
we got a reusable stencil. I am so excited. This is gonna make projects in the future just so much easier. And then I don't, you don't have to cut every single time. Like, yay. Okay, so I just held this down. I'm using my stencil brush from Dollar Tree, my rich black folk art chalk paint, and we are just going to stencil this in. And y'all, it worked perfectly just as good as any other stencil. I'm so excited that I tried this out for you guys. Oh, I just, I'm so excited. And you could do this with the Cricut Joy too. It, it's the same blade that's in the Cricut Joy. So all you would have to do is cut this down to size. And there we go. Look at how crisp that looks. And then I took my sanding block, sanded over, and I tried a couple different things, but I was like, you know what? Simple is the way to go. So I put a mason jar in there with some florals, wooded spoon, index cards for recipes, and that is it. You guys, these wood scrap pieces turned out absolutely amazing. The Cricut Joy and the Cricut Maker helped these projects go from like drab to fab for sure. I'm gonna leave any of the links of the stuff that I used in today's video. From Unicorn Dust Designs. Today we are making a stove top cover. So we need to measure length and width of our stove, including that nice plastic part, not just the inside of the stove. I went outside and cut four one by six pieces, 29 inches long, and two one by four pieces, 22 inches long. I will leave the make and the model of my stove along with all of the measurements. However, it will vary depending on your stove. So next I am taking um, Golden Oak by Rust-Oleum. We are gonna stain the front, the back, the sides, even the ends of all of our wood pieces. We are gonna allow those to dry fully before moving on. And um, this stain comparable would be Early American by Minwax. So now that those are all dry, we're gonna grab our Gorilla Glue. You could also use the wood glue from Dollar Tree. It actually works just as good. We are going to start piecing these together. So just so you guys know, a one by six actually measures out to be five and a half. So these worked out perfectly. So now I'm gonna take my clamps. We are gonna collect Ugh. clamp each side together so that our glue can set up and all this stuff is like concrete it ain't gonna move nowhere then we're gonna take our one by four pieces which essentially this is where our handles are gonna be set those on top make sure they're flush with your edges you're gonna repeat that step for the opposite side once that all dries we're gonna take our nail gun you could also you use nails and a hammer. Um, I do suggest you do this because it is a super heavy piece. So more security, the better. So after we're done with that, we're gonna go ahead and take this back inside. I am gonna grab Linen White by Rust-Oleum and I'm gonna give this a pretty healthy coat of paint. Um, I do not paint the, uh, what do you call it? The bottom of this, but you are going to paint all of your sides, the front, where your handles are gonna go, just paint all of it. Once it fully dries, we're gonna take this back out to the garage. We got our orbital sander, 220 grit sandpaper, and we are gonna sand away. Now, where you put more pressure, that's where you're gonna take off more paint. So you can tell where I pressed firmly down on my board. And then you're gonna go ahead and clean that up with a rag after you're done. Now taking these stencils I made with my Cricut, this is font courier and the cursive is about love and I am using Aura Mask 813 stencil vinyl. All of this is in my Amazon store link if you wanna head over to my channel and check that out. So we are going to rub these on, take our transfer tape off. Once we are through with that, I take the Rich Black by Folk Art. This is chalk paint and my mini roller. All I have to do is apply one coat of this. It is so jet black and beautiful, I love it. Once that dries, we'll go ahead and weed everything out. Now taking that rough sander again, we are gonna go ahead and just go over. I mean, if you want it more distressed, just hit it with the sander. After I'm done with that, we're gonna take, um, I sprayed it with clear so our black doesn't smear. And then poly acrylic, we're gonna coat it two times with this on the front and the back. 
after that dries, <laughs> we are gonna go ahead and measure out where our handles need to be. Now I couldn't find the original screws, so I'm using silver screws here, and then I'm just gonna paint them black, and y'all, that is absolutely it. I hope you guys enjoyed, and make sure to go vote for your favorite project. This is the final round, woo woo. All right, bye you guys. I just cannot believe how this turned out. It is absolutely beautiful. I don't know why it took me so long to make one of these. I was so intimidated by it, but it was so easy to put together. I absolutely love it in my home and I hope you guys try it out. Make sure to tag me on Instagram. If you do, I would love, love, love to see your creations. I think you knew I was not gonna not put a wood round in one of my videos and hopefully I will be bringing more wood rounds to you soon because now I can use my garage. So I always start off my wood rounds using 80 grit then to 20 grit sandpaper with my orbital sander. I do the front, the back, and the sides. You could get wood rounds at Home Depot and Menards and I'm sure many other places. I prefer to use microfiber cloths. <laughs> That's Hank. Um, when I am staining my wood, I am using Jacobian by Min Wax. I apologize, you guys. Let me shut the door. And I'm going to do the front, the back, and the sides with this stain. And then I am going to spray this with a clear shellac after I am done staining it. And I'm doing this because this particular wood round has a lot of knots in it. And those knots carry tannins that are gonna come through if you're using white paints, which I believe a little bit of tannin still came through because I have this in my booth right now. Um, and I'm going to take some painter's tape. This is actually automotive painter's tape that I used to get from my brother. It is in my Amazon store link though. It is a bit pricier, but the tack on it is so good that I have never had one bleed with this, but you can use regular painter's tape too. So we are gonna do this sign vertically instead of what you usually see, which is horizontally. I am going to take my sponge roller and linen white by Rust-Oleum, and we are gonna do two coats of paint drying in between coats. Once you are done with that, this is the most amazing part is when you pull back that tape and see these beautiful crisp lines. Just make sure that you brush away those little flakes coming off and do not wipe it off with your hand. Now we're going to take our stencil. I believe members, you were given this um, SVG file, but if not, let me know and I will put that in our file for you. And I am using Aura Mask 813 stencil vinyl. This is my go-to stencil vinyl and so is this um, transfer tape. It is vinyl ease. Everything for my wood rounds is on my Amazon in my Amazon store, the link is in the description box. I am using the excess transfer tape to just tape off my edges so I don't get the paint anywhere else. And then I'm going in with my little mini sponge roller and I am gonna do two coats as well on top of this. Now you can see all the flakes when you pull back your stencil. You wanna uh, brush those off with a paintbrush. If you try to like brush it off with your hand, it is gonna smear onto your sign and it's almost gonna act like smearing like wet paint, like it's not gonna come off. So be cautious of that. Once I am done taking that off, I again am going to use spar urethane. I used to use, use Helmsman, but um, I can't find it anymore. So I believe I started using the one that's in my Amazon store. I think it might be by Verithane. And since this wood round wasn't directly in the elements, I had an overhang over my porch. I just did two coats in, two coats on both the front and the back. I do not sand in between my coats. I've never had issues, um, but you know, to each their own. If you like that, then you do it. So after this is completely dry, I'm gonna grab my D hooks. These D hooks that are in my Amazon store do come with the screws. I like to put them on at least like three inches in on each side. And then I use wired jute cord 
um, to hang it up. Now, the length of that jute cord is gonna be solely up to you. I, at the old house, had a screw that had been in my door, so I needed a very specific length if I was going to actually be keeping it. So I think it was like 21 inches or something, but just test it out and see what works for you. You can also use different ribbons on these, regular jute cord, that is, that's up to you. After we're done with that, we're gonna flip our wood round back around. And this was the first time that I did a vertical wood round. And it is to this day, probably one of my favorite. And I kept it on my door for quite a while. And now it is in my booth. I am taking these lambs ear and I'm going to curve them to the curve of the wood round. And I'm going to use my staple gun to staple the main like stem of them, making sure I'm able to cover it with the leaves. So I do two on the bottom, and then I'm also gonna do two on top curving upwards. And I have to say this, the, the vertical look is so pretty. And it's different because I feel like, you know, uh, very often you see the wood rounds done horizontally. So if you wanna try something new, this is definitely the one to do. And I get all my lambs here at Walmart. After I'm done, um, stapling this, I am going to grab some ribbon. This is for all of you ladies and gents that do not like making bows. So I'm cutting, I think they're about five or six inch strips. You're going to hot glue the ends together and you're going to make as many of these as you want. So this is going to be your preference because it's going to be about how full you want your quote unquote bow to look. I'm also going to take this burlap ribbon. It's like the five inch one from Walmart. And I am going to scrunch them together and then staple it down. So you can see, you can't see the staple underneath your bow. And you're going to keep doing this until you get it to how you want. So I just wanted this as like the backdrop, the burlap. So I put that down. Then I take one of my loops. You scrunch that up as well. And then you are going to place that down and you're going to push it over and then staple it. This one, I, I didn't actually staple it. <laughs> so I'm going to jump ahead to kind of show you how full it could look. And you're just going to add more, less. You could add some of like the sparkly ribbon in there. It doesn't have to just be like one of them. But this ended up turning out so well. And I still love it to this day. You guys, we need to do some new wood rounds. I got some. I just, I, I haven't been like inspired for a design. You know what I'm saying? Like there's one I have in my head that I want to make for our house. But like I can't figure out, I want it to look like chippy and I don't know, we'll, we'll do some, I have some. But this was a fun take on the wood round and I loved how all of the colors vibed together. So gorgeous. For this one, you guys, this was an older video that I don't feel like enough people saw. So I'm just gonna kind of speed through it and then link the original one down below. So I had four thrifted items. I am gonna clean them with crud cutter. There is like a long sign, a wood basket, the um, little container that has like the glass containers in them. And then there is a shelf. So I cleaned it with crud cutter. Then I cleaned it with a wet rag to get the crud cutter off. And then I am going to completely spray paint these black. Now this, you guys, is when I first started uh, thrift flips. And if you couldn't tell, I was watching a lot of Ginger Chick Rehab because she does this process many times in her DIYs. So I spray painted everything in matte black by rust -Oleum, and then I completely let it dry. I really love watching my old videos sometimes just to see like how I've evolved and the processes have changed and how I've kind of found my own groove of doing things. Now I took a spray gun and I bought this because I saw everybody else use it and thought I was going to do a lot of stuff in bulk, which I do not do. <laughs> so this is not necessary, just paint it white. Um, but I did do all of it in bulk and just painted every single piece white. Now what I didn't show is I laid vinyl down on 
all of these um, beforehand. And members, I will link all of these designs for you on our members page. And I'm talking about membership, the YouTube membership. It's $4.99. You get access to any, um, any of the SVG files that I upload. Um, you get first look at videos if I get them done in advance. And then we have a members only live once a month. So I am just weeding all of this vinyl out. Um, like I said, I used that spray gun on top of this and it worked very well. I still didn't have any runs and this whole thing is going to be black and white. That was, that was the theme of this video. So again, if you want to see like the full on process of this, then I will leave the original video in the description box. I just wanted you guys to see like all of the outcomes of these because they were so darn cute and it didn't get many views. So I still actually have this bread box and used it at the old house for a very long time. Um, I probably need to clean it up and maybe I'll post it on the website. And then I took everything outside. I took my orbital sander and I just distressed um, everywhere that would naturally distress from like wear and tear on these items. I did this. You guys told me what that wood basket was called. Drop a comment down below. I know it's called something. Um, I haven't found one of these that I'm sanding at the thrift store in a very long time with like the glass containers in them. And then this shelf, you guys, is still at my booth. I am shocked, absolutely shocked. But I sanded it and then I did clear these with clear matte by Rust-Oleum. Um, anything that is going to have more hands-on though, I would definitely clear it with like a poly acrylic and poly acrylic is food safe if you allow it to cure correctly. I love how this bread box turned out. I no, I never put it in my booth. Actually, I ended up keeping it for myself at the house and um, it never got put back up when we moved into the new one. This one did sell at the booth and I loved the font and then there's even like a little wheat emblem there you go on the back and the distressing and everything looked so on point so if you see these pick them up they are easy flips to do and i also did which i did not show it's coming up a sign um you guys what is this basket called you guys told me i don't know uh this I think this is still at my booth. It is just really weird what things sell at the booth versus what will sit there, but I'm pretty sure this is still at the booth. And here is this sign. This sign is still at the booth too. So I will have to put this on my website. It is so beautiful. It's actually big. I'm kind of shocked that I only put it for $27.95 because it is a very long sign and it's beautiful and it has so much detail in it. It took a lot of work. And then the last one that we did was this shelf. And y'all, this shelf is still in my booth. This video is over a year old. I can't believe that it is still in my booth. I'm probably going to take it home and use it behind the bar or something, but absolutely gorgeous. Thank you all for being here. So very much. I appreciate you spending your time with me. Make sure to go down in that description box and check out the June's journey link. You will not be disappointed with it. I promise you. And, um, make sure to check out the website. You guys, you get Hank drinking in the background. If you can't hear it. Okay. No. Okay, and then <sighs> tell me how the lighting is. Okay. <sighs> Ding. Ding. <laughs>